Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's take a look at X-ray astronomy. Of course, X-rays do not make it through the atmosphere in any way, shape, or form. So the only way that we can observe X-rays is from space. Now, there were some very early observations, even back in the, the late 1940s, when people were experimenting with rockets and trying to get rockets up into space. When they went to the suborbital, um, what we call suborbital flight. They had some instruments on board and they actually observed X-ray radiation coming from the sun's corona. Of course, they couldn't pinpoint it, but they had, an, they had an idea that this is probably where the source was coming from. So they had the idea that the sun's corona, the area around the sun, was very hot. Again, X-rays are produced at very high temperatures, anywhere from a million to 100 million degrees Kelvin. And so sun's corona was expected to be pretty hot and so the observations seem to indicate that yes indeed it was. By now we know that the sun's corona has temperatures of about 1 to 2 million degrees Kelvin. Then in 1962, after the satellites began to be fired into space, we had an observatory that was able to measure the very high x-rays uh, that were the x-rays that were coming from space and so we also had indication that not just the sun was producing x-rays but they were also coming from beyond our own solar system from different directions so when technology improved we started putting some very good x-ray detectors in space now detecting x-rays is pretty tricky you can do it in the same way that visible telescopes do by having a reflecting mirror at the bottom the way they build them is they have these very steep angled curved mirrors where the x-rays then come and have a glancing blow against against them because if you have them come in perpendicular you're going to have trouble getting them to be reflected because they have such penetrating power it will not work very well so they have, they have the way they have it set up is that it's kind of like a glancing blow coming in on these curved mirrors and then there'll be a detector a number of meters away from these mirrors and that will then detect the x-rays coming in again the x-rays will come in at very high uh, energies the best telescope that we have up there now called New Star that was launched in 2012 can collect energies from 5 to 80 kilo electron volts which is pretty energetic but the first ones that were put up like in 1999 the, Chan the Chandra Observatory as we call it had a resolution of 0.5 arc seconds which is absolutely amazing our urban telescopes can't even do that well and of course one of the reasons why they have very small resolution angles is because we're watching very very small wavelengths so even with small collecting areas and small detectors we can do very well on the resolution angle with x-rays so another special um, capability of the Chandra was that it had very good response time to changes in the spectral lines so when there was a very quick change in the spectral lines it could keep up it had very high precision and it can keep track of things changing at a rate of 16 microseconds so it was, had a very uh, good computer system on board and was able to track very very quick changes in the x-rays in 1999 same time when Chandra was launched we we launched the XMM Newton I believe that was the Europeans that did that and this is a multi-mirror device so instead of just having a, a single set of mirrors it came with three sets of mirrors that all then channeled the x-rays down to a single detector and so vastly improving the ability to collect more of the energy it could collect five times as much energy as the Chandra telescope could now there the interest was more in collecting more energy not so much in resolution the resolution angle for that one was only about six arc seconds because the mirrors weren't ground to the fine precision that you needed for something as accurate as the Chandra so we call this kind of like the three-in-one system where it had three collecting areas where that was then channeled down to a single detector and New Star one of the big advances of New Star is that it came with a very long mast so this is a space-borne telescope that had a 32 foot long mask a 10 meter long mass so that the focal length was 10 meters that gave us enormous precision very high energies were being collected and with that telescope we're actually able to calculate the spin rates of supermassive black holes so very close to the black hole when the dust and gas around it starts spinning at very high velocities we're able to calculate the spin rate with a telescope like this so again things we couldn't observe with regular optical telescopes so we put these things in space in order to better uh, better expand our understanding of astronomy observing at the various frequencies including x-rays. 